Hi there, if you're editing log footage in DaVinci Resolve, perhaps something like Canon C-Log, Sony S-Log3, or even DJI's D-Log-M, then you're going to need to take certain steps to get it looking correct when you export your final video. I'm gonna start off by showing you the wrong way to do this in DaVinci Resolve, and then I'm gonna explain why and how we can actually fix it. So we'll head into DaVinci Resolve. I've already got this timeline open, and this particular clip was shot using Sony S-Log3. What I'm gonna show you in this video also applies to other log formats. So you can see that this footage is desaturated and very flat and washed out looking. That's because we haven't yet done any color grading on it. So what we could do is we could just come down to the color page here and we could start messing around with some of these controls to try and get things looking how we want. We could add some contrast here we could add some saturation and really just start playing around with the image until we get it looking how we want. So what we're doing here is we're just using the monitor to gauge whether or not we've done a good job of getting that log footage looking like something that we could export and perhaps upload to YouTube, for example. This of course assumes that the monitor that we're using is actually displaying colors and brightness information in a correct way. My top monitor up there is actually a color calibrated monitor calibrated to Rec 709. So I know at least that monitor reflects the export format that I'm going to be using. So we could continue to mess around with this, maybe change the contrast or the pivot, play around with the color balance here. But the problem with this overall approach is that we're using our eyes and we're just playing around almost like playing around in the dark really or searching around in the dark for a good looking image. There is however a much better way of doing this and that's to use mathematics to convert from the log footage that was used to shoot the footage in the camera into a color space that we know and then use more maths to convert from that color space to the final color space that we want to deliver. For example for YouTube this would be Rec 709. Using the approach that I'm about to show you takes a lot of the guesswork out of working with log footage and gives you a really strong foundation on top of which you can apply your creative color grading. What I'm going to do is we'll just Reset this node and we're going to come up to the file menu and come down to project settings and make sure you're in this color management tab. In this case we're going to be using a non-color managed workflow so it's okay to leave the color science as DaVinci YRGB. We're going to change our timeline color space here and if we just scroll up you want to look for something called DaVinci wide gamut slash intermediate. You can think of DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate as being this gigantic ball inside which color information and brightness information can be stored. It's a lot bigger than Rec. 709, for example, and it's actually the biggest color space that we can use with DaVinci Resolve. The benefit of this is that we're not going to push up against the side of anything when we're actually performing the color grading. We will, of course, at some point have to go from that massive ball down to the small golf ball sized output color space of something like Rec. 709. If we come back to the color management project settings here I'm going to set the output color space here to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because we're going to assume that we're delivering this edit for broadcast or for something like YouTube. Once you've changed those settings click save to apply them. So there's three phases to working with this log footage. The first phase is to take the log footage that was shot in camera and transform that using mathematics into DaVinci Wide Gamut. The second phase is to actually perform the creative color grading. So that's creating the look and the feel that you want to get across in your video. And the third phase is to take that color grade, transform it from DaVinci Wide Gamut into whichever format you want to deliver it. For example, Rec. 709 2.4. So we're gonna use a number of nodes for this. On the left here, we've got our log footage and this dot just represents the incoming video information, in this case, in a log format. What we're going to want to do is, in this first node, convert the log footage into DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. To do that, open up the Effects tab here, and in the search box, just search for Transform, and then drag this color space transform effect over on top of this first node. Now we can use this node to do the conversion from the log format to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Because I know that this footage was shot using Sony S-Log3, I'm gonna start off by setting this input color space. And if I scroll down here, we can see Sony S-Gamma 3 Cine. For the input gamma, this is going to be Sony's S-Log3. I'm gonna scroll down here and choose S-Log3. You're going to need to know what log format the footage was shot in to use this approach. For the output color space, we're going to use DaVinci Wide Gamut and the output gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. We'll just leave all of these other settings as the default and close this effects tab. So you can see now in this footage that it still doesn't look really any different. What I'm gonna do is right click on this node and I'm gonna choose node label. 
We'll just give it a label to help us understand what's happening to DaVinci Wide Gamut. So this is the conversion from log to DaVinci Wide Gamut. The next thing I'm going to do is right click here and I'm going to choose add node and choose add serial node. And I'm just going to move this across to the other side here. And I'm going to give this a label to Rec 709. Once again, come up to the effects. You can use your middle mouse button held down to scroll around these nodes. Drag the color space transform onto this new node. And this time we want to go from the current color space, which is DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. Just make a bit more room here so you can see what's going on. And the output color space is what we're going to be essentially encoding and delivering. In the example we're using here, this is Rec 709 with a gamma of 2.4. You can see now in this image that it's looking a bit more normal. If I just bypass the color grading, we get the original log image. And if I turn on color grading, we get this more pleasing looking image. I'm just going to go and close the effects here. So at the minute, this seems a bit pointless. We're going from the log footage and then converting it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then we're just converting DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709. But this is basically the template we want in place. What we can do now is add nodes between these two nodes. So for example, we'll add a new serial node. And in these nodes, we can do the actual color grading process. The key point here is that we're not relying on our eyes to do the conversion from the different log formats or into Rec 709. We're actually using mathematics to map those different color spaces to each other to give us a really good foundation and you can see in the monitor here that we've actually got a really good looking image before we've even done any manual color grading i'm just going to use a basic three-step color grading process here so i'm going to call this first node exposure i'm going to add a new node you can either right click and choose add serial or you can use alt s on the keyboard we'll call this node contrast and we'll add another node and we'll call this third node color it's inside these three nodes that we're going to perform the creative color grading. We don't need to edit these two other nodes. We can think of these as technical nodes and these as creative nodes. If you know how to use scopes, you can come down here and click this button to open up the scopes and choose between various scopes, such as the waveform here. And if you click this button, you can modify the parameters. So for example, we might not want to colorize the waveform. We might just want to see the luminance information. You can also turn on this qualifier here and in the scopes here, click these three dots and turn on display qualifier focus. Now, when I'm moving around the image here, notice what's happening in the waveform. Wherever I move this little eyedropper, it's telling us where that relates to in the scopes. So we're in this first exposure node. This node is all about getting a good starting level of exposure. We're using the color space transforms to do the maths to convert between the different formats. So we don't have to worry about making the log footage look like non-log footage. That's being done for us. So what I'm gonna do, we'll just brighten things up a little bit. And then we'll move over to this second contrast node. It's inside this node that we can modify the contrast ratios of the image. So for example, I can hover over this contrast word left click and hold the mouse button down. And if I move the mouse to the left, we reduce the contrast. And if I move it to the right, it increases the contrast. So it's just a case of finding a look that you want. You can double click on contrast to reset this value. And if you want to reset everything in this primaries color panel, click this button here. And if you want to reset an entire node, you can right click on the node and choose reset color grade. Let me just do that on the exposure node. Right click, choose reset node grade. Notice we lose all of the color grading decisions we've made in this exposure node. So let's go and do that again. I'm just going to left click on this offset wheel. Just move it to the right with the mouse button held down till I get an exposure that I like the look of. Once again, we'll just tidy up the contrast here. You can also use this pivot value to modify how the contrast curve gets applied or double click it to reset. The third node here is where we're going to do any color balancing or changes to the color. You could do this using the temperature value here. You can just left click, hold down the mouse button move it to the left to make the image bluer or right to make it warmer or double click to reset. Similarly, you've got tint, left goes green, right goes magenta. Or you can drag this little ball in the middle of this offset wheel, hold your left mouse button down and drag it around and it's going to change the color balance of the image. To reset this offset color, double click in the middle. To reset this entire primaries color panel, click this button here or to reset the entire node, right click and choose reset. In this image, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this ball down and across, kind of in a southeasterly direction, just to cool off the image a bit. If you want to preview what it looks like without a node doing its work, click on the node and use Ctrl D on the keyboard to disable the node. 
You can see over here that the node kind of gets darkened. That means it's not currently active. And if you hit Control D again, it re-enables it. If we select all of these three nodes by left clicking and dragging and hitting Control D, we can see what the image look like with the basic technical conversions. And if I hit Control D again, those nodes get enabled. In this example that we're using here, we've got three separate nodes, one for exposure, one for contrast, and one for color. We could actually mix all of those things and just use one single node and adjust all of those things in one single node. The problem with that is, is that if you want to enable and disable part of your creative grade, such as the contrast, you can't actually disable or enable it because it's mixed in with all of the other changes. Also, it means if you're only using one single node, if you've made a mistake, say 10 steps back when you're changing the contrast, if you want to undo all of those changes going back, you're also going to lose all of the other changes. For example, things that you've changed in the color balance. By the way, if you want to learn to edit faster in DaVinci Resolve, make sure you check out my DaVinci Resolve editing field manual. I'll put a link in the description. The approach that we've used here has required us to add two extra nodes to do the mathematical color space transforms between log formats and Rec. 709. There is actually a simplified way of doing this in DaVinci Resolve, and that's to use DaVinci Resolve's color managed workflow. When we do that, we don't need to add those extra two nodes. We can just get on with the color grading process. To learn how to do this, you should check out this next video as I go in depth and you should be able to see the differences between these two approaches. Personally, I prefer the color managed workflow approach as it's just a few less things to have to take care of. This channel is all about making better looking, better sounding and better edited videos. If that's something that's interesting to you, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.